the city was a labyrinth of secrets, a tangled web of lies and deceit that could swallow a man whole if he wasn't careful. I'd seen my fair share of darkness in this line of work, but nothing could have prepared me for the case that walked through my door on that fateful gray morning. Tommy Jackson was a man haunted by grief, his eyes hollow and his shoulders slumped under the weight of his daughter's murder. Tiffany, a young mother of two, had been found dead in her own home, her life snuffed out like breath to a candle flame. The cops were on the case, but Tommy wasn't convinced that they had what it took to find the killer. That's where I came in. I have a thirst for justice and a nose for the truth. My name's not important. I'm a private eye. I took the case, diving headfirst into the murky waters of Tiffany's life. The crime scene was a nightmare, a once happy home turned into a blood-soaked battleground. The photos were seared into my mind like a brand, adding to the constant reminder of the cruelty that lurks in the hearts of murderers. Tiffany had been planning to divorce her husband, Andre, a man who couldn't manage a dime if his life depended on it. It seemed that Andre had a motive as clear as the written word. I started by following Andre's trail, a path that twisted and turned like ivy on a wall. His boss, Cliff, and his friend, Tamika, sang the same tune, backing up his alibi like a well-rehearsed chorus. But something didn't sit right, like a pebble in my shoe that I couldn't shake loose. Andre claimed he was at work, spinning records at Club Onyx, and after digging, I discovered he was right. His alibi was legitimate. It wasn't until I heard Cliff mention the basement break-in that the pieces started to fall into place like notes in a symphony that wasn't done being written. Andre knew something he shouldn't have, a fact that stuck out like a shark fin in calm waters. How could he have known about the basement if the alarm company hadn't mentioned it? It was a question that gnawed at me like a hungry rat, a question that demanded an answer. I dug deeper, unearthing a second cell phone that Andre had kept hidden, a device that held the key to unlocking the truth. The texts were the smoking gun a collection of threats and promises that painted a picture of a man consumed by greed and desperation. Andre couldn't bear the thought of losing everything in a divorce, watching his cushy lifestyle slip through his fingers. He was a man backed into a corner, a man willing to do anything to keep what he believed was rightfully his. The cell tower data was the final nail in the coffin placing Andre and his best friend, Adrian Harley, at the scene of the crime. Two rats caught in a trap. Surveillance footage from a neighbor's house clenched it, showing their cars circling the block like vultures waiting for their prey to die. It was a damning piece of evidence. I confronted Andre, laying out the evidence like a royal flush in a high-stakes poker game. He tried to bluff his way out, pointing the finger at Adrian. But it was too late for lies. Too late for anything but the cold, hard truth. Andre had orchestrated his wife's murder, a cowardly act born of greed and a twisted sense of entitlement. He thought he could get away with it, thought he could outsmart the law and the truth. But he was wrong. Dead wrong. Adrian the best man at Andre and Tiffany's wedding had been in on it from the beginning. He was Andre's right-hand man, a willing accomplice in a plot as sinister as a demon's grin. Together, they had planned to make Tiffany's death look like a burglary gone wrong, a tragic accident that would leave Andre a grieving widower with a fortune to his name. But the alarm had thrown them off a wrench in their carefully laid plans that had sent them scrambling like cockroaches exposed to the light. In the end, Andre and Adrian were caught in a web of their own making, sentenced to life behind bars for a crime that was as senseless as it was brutal. 
Tiffany's death was a tragedy, a life cut short by the very people who should have loved and protected her. Her children, Jasmine and AJ, were left without a mother, their innocence shattered by the cruelty of the world and the one they called Dad. As I walked out of that courtroom, the weight of the case still heavy on my shoulders, I knew that justice had been served. But the bitter taste of it lingered in my mouth like the dregs of a cheap whiskey. In this business, you learn that the fight for what's right never really ends, that the darkness is always waiting just around the corner, ready to swallow you whole. But sometimes, just sometimes, you can make a difference that matters. You can shine a light into the shadows, expose the truth for all to see. You can give a voice to the voiceless, a chance for the innocent to be heard. That's what I did for Tiffany, for her family, for the memory of a life cut tragically short. As I stepped out into the gray, unforgiving streets of the city, I knew that my work was far from over, though. There'd always be another case, another mystery to unravel, another wrong to make right. But for now, I could take solace in the fact that I'd done my part, that I'd fought the good fight and come out the other side. In the end, that's all any of us can do. We can stand up for what's right, even when the odds are stacked against us. We can speak up for those who have no voice and step up for the downtrodden. We can make a difference one case at a time, one truth at a time. That's the life of a private eye. It's not an easy road, but it's the only one I know. And as long as there are people like Tiffany, people who need someone to fight for them, I'll be there, ready to take on whatever the world throws my way.